Since I love buying everything I can find electronics related in China and you seem to like watching these videos, I have another in the mail for you. I don't always need these items before ordering them, but as I mentioned many times, it takes 8 weeks on average for me to receive them and these are usually general purpose uh, products, so it's nice to already have them in the lab for when I need them. And we're going to start by looking at these um, phenolic type uh, proto PCBs. Everyone knows these, they are the cheapest PCBs you can get. They have uh, 0.1 inch uh, spaced holes with um, copper pads only on one side. They, these can be useful when trying to put together a circuit. They are good for low power, non-critical circuits. But if you want to get something better, I would suggest taking a look at the FR4 version of these uh, prototyping PCBs, which is better quality, has double-sided pads and can withstand a higher temperature. Don't forget to check the links in the description for a selection of these uh, prototyping PCBs. Our next item is this set of uh, 10 pieces carbide drill bits for PCB drilling. This set goes from 0.3 mm up to 1.2 mm in uh, 0.1 mm increments and contains the sizes that I use mostly. Although to be honest I haven't done any homemade uh, PCBs in the past couple of years because it's just uh, too easy these days to get them manufactured professionally in China. However, if I do find myself in a situation where I need a quick prototype just to prove something is working, it's nice to have the right tools to be able to make it. You can also find these in other sizes and the price is not bad. I got my set for under $3 with free shipping. So I'll post links in the description for both eBay and Banggood for purchasing a set of these uh, drill bits. Next we have this PCB for LEDs. This is the aluminium substrate type PCB, which can help a lot with uh, heat dissipation from LEDs. The size of this PCB is uh, 88 by 61 millimeters, and it's sold as a 10 watt base PCB. Although I'm not sure this thing will handle 10 watts, but it does have uh, mounting holes, so you can mount it to a larger aluminium heatsink to provide adequate cooling. It has six of these uh, rather universal uh, LED pads where you can solder 1 watt, 3 watt or 5 watt LEDs and they're all connected in series and in uh, and their final connections are these two pads and that is nice because uh, that's what you would want to drive uh, 6 LEDs. I have purchased and uh, shown here several LED types and I started getting some base PCBs for them as well to start using them. This board was uh, $1.20 on eBay and there will be a link in the description below. Next, I also ordered some of these uh, star-shaped aluminum PCBs. These on their own can't do much uh, heat dissipation, so these need to be uh, strapped to an aluminum heatsink. And depending on how hard you are driving the LEDs, you need to size your uh, heatsink accordingly. But they are good because you get the uh, pads for soldering the LED and the aluminium backing that can help draw the heat away from the uh, LED package. These are very cheap, you can get uh, 10 pieces pack for $1 with free shipping from eBay. Our next item is this LED driver which I ordered over 3 months ago from Banggood. So once again you get a sense of how long it takes for me to receive these items in Romania. This module is a 20 watts uh, waterproof IP67 LED driver. Unfortunately, it's uh, fully potted, so I can't show you the insides. But I was planning to drive some of these uh, LEDs that I showed in previous videos. In fact, this thing could uh, drive um, six LEDs in series soldered on this uh, PCB that I showed earlier. It has an output of uh, 20 to 39 volts at 600 milliamps, which I think it's uh, just about right for 3 watt white LEDs. Our next item is this uh, electroluminescent panel, 10 cm by 10 cm in size. This one is for replacing the backlight on an older piece of uh, equipment that I have, where the original backlight slowly degraded until it's no longer visible. 
I can only do the replacement if this panel is cuttable, which I don't really know just by looking at it. But I might also have another alternative for this uh, backlight issue. But all of this will be discussed in a separate video where I will be doing the mod on the equipment. Until then, let me know if you recognize this type of uh, panel and if you've uh, tried cutting it and it still worked uh, afterwards. These are some uh, flat DC vibration motors. I think you can find these in um, older mobile phones because uh, otherwise these days in modern phones I think they are uh, much smaller. I'm not sure how they work inside but I'm thinking there could be two possibilities. Either some coils vibrating a metallic piece in between or uh, these could be uh, a small flat DC motor inside. I might even do a teardown just to check them out. The idea behind this was to do some experiments with haptic feedback. I think sometimes it's nice to have some kind of uh, haptic feedback when you're pressing buttons. So I got this uh, set of 5 pieces from eBay for about $2.50 with free shipping. This is a high voltage uh, step up module capable according to its specs of generating 400 kV output from a 3 to 6 volts DC input. There are various specs for the output voltage, in one place you'll find it as 200 kV, in another place it's stated uh, as 400 kV, but one thing is certain, this can give you a serious shock and it can arc uh, one centimeter in the air easily. So be very careful when playing with this. Unfortunately this whole module looks like it's been fully potted so we won't be able to take a look inside. Uh, I got this module just to have a little play, make some arcs and nothing more. It was about $3.50 with free shipping and I'll post links to both eBay and Banggood in the description. Unfortunately, as I uh, mentioned, it's all potted and we won't be able to take a closer look at the uh, circuit inside and maybe attempt to modify it. Next I have this small plastic bottle with this uh, needle tip. This type of bottles are great for soldering flux. I think this one is a 10 milliliter type but you can get them in various different sizes and very cheaply. I like the 10 millimeter size because flux will tend to evaporate slowly if left open and it's also much less of a mess if you accidentally spill this uh, smaller 10 milliliter bottle. So there will be a link in the description for this, uh, do check these bottles out, they are very handy in the lab. My next item is this 50mm silent cooling fan. We all know how noisy the fan in the Rigel DS1054Z can be, so I looked around for a replacement. I originally wanted to get something from Sunon, but using my local distributor catalog in the same 50mm size, I could only get ones that had uh, less airflow. I couldn't get any silent uh, Sunon fans that had approximately the same airflow as the original fa fan in the Rigel. So then I moved my search on uh, eBay and found this uh, Gelid Silent 5 which has similar specs and it's supposed to be much quieter according to its specs. So I will make a separate video of, of me doing this uh, mod on the oscilloscope and the link for this cooling fan will be in the description below. I also got a couple of these battery storage boxes. These are sized for lithium 18650 cells which I use a lot in all of my flashlights. So these will come in handy when I go hiking or camping. They will help keep my batteries secured and organized. You can also find these on uh, eBay for other types of batteries, different sizes, different number of cells. I'll show these two items together. This one is a small plastic uh, project box. It's uh, 10 centimeters by 6 by 2.5 centimeters exterior size and it's great for small DIY projects. And it, it's also cheap at just $1 with free shipping from eBay. I also got this uh, three pole um, four throw rotary switch with multiple positions and I plan to use these two to make myself a precision current source according to a circuit posted by Skullcom Hobby on YouTube. I will post a link in the description to that video 
and if you're not following his channel you should because he always posts very nice DIY projects mostly on how to build the lab instruments so you will see me build that circuit in a separate video from my small collection of ESP8266 modules and boards I was missing this version the one that has all the pins broken out and an USB to serial interface chip as well so let's open this anti-static bag These can be commonly found on eBay if you search for Node MCU ESP8266 and there is no point explaining what these can do. Most of you already know that you can do pretty much everything IoT related with one of these modules. They are great to keep around because uh, they're so easy to program having that USB to serial interface on board. You just need to plug it in into a USB port and you're good to go. The one I got from eBay has the CP2102 USB chip, while the one on Banggood uh, has the CH340 USB chip. I don't know if one is better than the other, my guess is that there won't be any differences, so get whichever you like best. There will be links in the description for both uh, eBay and uh, Banggood for purchasing these, uh, this module. You've seen many of these uh, before right here on my channel. This is yet another DC to DC converter. These are handy, I use them everywhere in repairs or with, or with new DIY projects where space is not a constraint. I tend to use one of these to step down the voltage to something that I can more easily regulate with an LDO. So as mentioned before, I always keep a couple of these in my lab because you never know when you're going to need them. This one is supposed to have the LM2596, so we can see that marked on the chip. But you can't be sure, it could just be one of those XL Semi chips that has been uh, laser etched to say something else. Next, I have this PIR motion detection sensor module. This one is the SR501 model number with a blue PCB. I've noticed this uh, come in blue and green PCB as well. I don't know what the difference is between them. This module has adjustable delay and block time through two small uh, variable resistors. It can operate from uh, 4.5 to 20 volts and it has a TTL output uh, at 3.3 volts. It's quite a compact form factor as you can see and you can use these anywhere where you would want to control something after motion has been detected. My next item is a 2000 watt SCR motor speed controller module. This thing was very cheap, under $2 with uh, free shipping. It does have a, a small heatsink. It can handle 240 volts AC according to the uh, product page, but I'm not sure how hot that small heatsink will get. Well, basically that depends on your load. Myself, however, I won't be pushing it uh, that far. I, will, uh, I only plan on driving a couple of uh, 12 cm mains powered cooling fans, but they are quite efficient from Sunon and they don't draw that much uh, power. So maybe I will uh, load this to a maximum of 10% uh, of its uh, rated power. My plan is to build a, a custom fume extractor to use at my workbench. I wanted to have a high suction force when needed, but I also want to have the ability to run it at a lower speed when I don't want that much noise and I only do light soldering work. So you'll probably see this in a separate video coming soon. This one is a power supply kit based on the LT1083 from Linear Technology. I got it for about uh, $5 from eBay. It can take a DC input of uh, 2.5 volts up to 38 volts and you get an adjustable DC output of uh, 2.5 to uh, 35 volts with a maximum current of 7 amps. But uh, of course with adequate cooling. As you noticed uh, this will not go down to 0 volts so it's not ideal as a uh, lab power supply but I think uh, it's good enough for general purpose. So in this uh, package you get uh, the PCB, all the required parts and this uh, small heatsink. 
you will need to provide your own uh, input power to this uh, power supply module so you can use either an AC transformer because this uh, has a bridge rectifier on the input or you can supply it with uh, DC from one of those uh, laptop power bricks but more on that in a separate video where I will be assembling and testing this kit and finally the last item in this in the mail is uh, this USB 3.0 to 2.5 inch SATA high drive interface this is not exactly electronics related but you might have used or needed something like this at some point and since I got it and I'm quite happy with it I thought I'd show it in this uh, video uh, and recommend it because it's a good product it's mostly useful for transferring data uh, data recovery stuff like that I also have an eSATA to 2.5 inch SATA interface that I use on my computer but not all uh, computers uh, laptops especially have uh, eSATA ports while most of them do have USB 3.0 ports this one is made by a company called uh, Myvo and it had a very good price on eBay at just uh, six dollars with free shipping I gave it a small test drive and I got very good results uh, fast transfer speeds so if you need something like this I can recommend get this one I'm happy how it works and it was cheap as usual there are links in the description for all of the items shown in this video and keep in mind that these are affiliate links which means I will get a small commission out of each purchase made through these links it doesn't affect you in any way you still get the same price but it really helps this channel and uh, it can keep these videos coming thank you for watching this video don't forget to like and subscribe and I will see you next time